Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Carl Anthony and this is AutoVision News live at AutoSense and In Cabin USA 2024. We are in the heart of the Motor City at the Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. Joining us now is Daniel Schwartzberg, Director of Business Development and Systems Solutions at Valenz Semiconductor. Daniel brings more than 30 years of engineering experience to this role, working with OEMs and Tier 1s worldwide to bring innovative next-generation EE architectures and solutions to the market. Daniel holds a master's degree in engineering and a bachelor's degree with honors in electrical and electronic engineering from the University of Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. Daniel, welcome and thank you for being with us. Thank you for that introduction, Carl. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I bet you, I bet you know my first question. <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> go ahead. Anyway. And it's about MIPI A5. Wow, there you go. <laughs> so we hear a ton of talk in the yes, industry about MIPI A5. So can you take us through what A5 is and what that means when we see it and hear it? Okay, so that's a great question. So, you know, we have these CERDES technologies out there that enable high-speed connectivity between things like sensors, cameras, radars, LIDARs, and, and ECUs, right? Sure. Um, and for years, the industry has been using, and I'm even going to go as far as say it's been playing plagued by proprietary single source solutions, single source uh, proprietary service technologies. Um, and you just need to turn the clock back a few years to the pandemic, the start of the pandemic, and suddenly we saw uh, we saw the supply chain issues uh, in the automotive industry. Uh, you just need to look what's happened since then to understand the proprietary single source are, are, are dirty words uh, in the industry. Um, so MIPI A5 finally brings the industry a genuine standardized solution for high speed deserializer, deserializer connectivity uh, to the automotive world. It is designed from the ground up for the automotive segment. So in other words, uh, it brings benefits. It takes into consideration the environment that a vehicle is in, the environment that the silicon is in, uh, to really bring extremely, extremely robust, high-speed uh, data links. For example, like I say, for camera connectivity, uh, but it can even e equally be for radars uh, and LIDARs. So it's a standard, and the industry likes standards and fine Finally, 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 we have one. It's also a digital-based technology. So in other words, legacy solutions, uh, we're using kind of analog-based technologies, um, which hit limitations in terms of bandwidth, cable lengths, types of cables that can be used. And now A5 finally brings a DSP-based, a digital-based technology, um, which enables it to achieve what I just mentioned, extreme, extreme link robustness, extreme, extreme low packet error rates, low latency, the use of long and simple cables, Tables, um, and it's really a home run for the industry. Right, right. Let's expand on that. You mentioned a lot of the improvements that, that it brings from a technology point of view. What are the? Why are these improvements significant? Okay, so it, it, it's a great question because ultimately, when it goes into the vehicle, you really want to benefit from those improvements that it brings. So, as I say, DSP based. What that means is that where other legacy technologies rely, for example, on the use of shielded cables in order to prevent the harsh electromagnetic noises in, in, in the uh, automotive environment getting into their system. MIPI A5 takes a completely different approach. It says, okay, noise will get in. What we're going to do is implement a noise canceller, a just-in-time noise canceller that switches on and switches off in order to cancel out the noise just at the time it's needed. Um, that noise canceller is designed specifically for the types of noises prevalent uh, in the industry, for example, narrowband interferences that legacy technology is using what's known as forward error correction, simply can't handle. So we have this noise canceller that works extremely efficiently and because it switches on and off when needed then it, it helps to minimize the power consumption because it's not running all the time like forward error correction is. Right. So we have extremely good no uh, noise resilience. Uh, it helps us to maintain low power uh, on the silica, low power on the links. Um, we also have as part of this, this, this noise robustness we have another mechanism uh, in A5 which is a, a physical layer retransmission. Okay. The physical Physical layer means that it happens at, at the lowest level of the stack, like the system stack. The physical layer is what drives data to and recovers data from uh, the wire itself, from the channel, from the cable. Uh, that retransmission is used for two things. One, it allows us during a noise cancellation uh, event, which takes around about one microsecond, so it's very, very short-lived, but nonetheless we lose a few data packets. That retransmission mechanism allows us to get those packets back. That retransmission mechanism is also used um, for sporadic 
single bit like noise error. So the packet was received. It didn't get lost while being noise was being cancelled. A packet was received. It has an error in it. We can retransmit and get that packet back without errors. Now this happens at the physical layer. It happens very very quickly, and that actually means that the AFI link. All of this is happening uh, in the overhead of the link. The AFI link guarantees you uh, a guaranteed uh, data throughput at the application layer and a fixed latency. So from a system level, the camera to the ECU, for example, they don't know that any of this, these goodies are happening on the link. You get data which is guaranteed throughput, you get data which is guaranteed latency. Uh, and it's really an, an incredibly powerful system and designed specifically, as I say, to meet the challenges of the automotive environment. Sure. The automotive industry, what is their reception to this standard? How, how, how have they received this? Well, I think you only have to look at the growing ecosystem that this standard is bringing, right? And uh, we uh, had uh, on display in our booth at CES, uh, we had a, a snapshot of products which were a snapshot of the products that are out there, which are in themselves a snapshot of things that are publicly declared. So what we had, we had camera sensors, uh, camera systems, I should say, uh, from multiple players all across the globe. Uh, companies like Nippon Chemicon in, uh, in Japan, Chemtronics in Korea. LG Electronics just announced that they are moving all of their 2026 platform to be based upon MIPI A5 compliant chipsets. Sure. That's a huge endorsement from the industry. We, sure. saw, we saw platform vendors uh, uh, like uh, Mobileye, uh, like uh, Black Sesame in China. Uh, we hear about Aptiv uh, integrating into their smart vehicle architecture. So we see the camera side, we see the, the, the platform side, we see radars from companies like smart radar systems in Korea, uh, G-Pulse in China. We even have a LiDAR from Innoviz, um, which, which is a rotating LiDAR that right. uses MIPI A5R chipsets inside to help bridge an air gap between the rotating and fixed parts. And that's just on the product side. Yeah. Then you the more uh, I've been attacked by a fly. Um, and then you have the more um, and then you have the more kind of IP level. So we're the first to bring chipsets to market, but we know LG and the tech in Korea are doing system in package modules. Um, Intel Foundry uh, services we announced just before uh, CS uh, are partnering with us to bring our next generation of chipset. Uh, so they're throwing their weight behind MIPI A5. They're looking for a, an automotive grade connectivity solution. And coming from Intel Foundry systems, that's a huge endorsement. Yeah. And there's test equipment. So it's an ecosystem that's very wide in terms of it covering all the different elements that a technology needs to bring very deep in terms of the players. And I think that's all the evidence you really need to see just how the industry is reacting to AFI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Valens has the first AFI compliant chipset. So all this stuff we've been talking about, MIPI AFI, you are involved in it day to day with these chipsets. So tell us more about your offering there, Dan. So yes, we, we are indeed the first to bring chipsets to market, but we, I'm sure will not be the last. It is a standard, and what's great about the standard is, of course, interoperability is guaranteed to so anyone who brings products to market uh, will, will, will benefit from interoperability. I should mention also, by the way, Sony Semiconductor is already working on integrating AFI directly into the sensor, and right. we just passed interop testing with them. So that's the beauty of a standard. So we have we have a number of chips that are coming out uh, over the course of the back end of this year. We already have the silicon. We have been sampling now uh, for quite some time. We have those chips in our evaluation kit uh, under evaluation at many different OEMs, tier ones and tier twos around the globe. Uh, we see the first RFQs and RFQs eyes coming in that we are addressing. So again, a sign that the industry is adopting this. Uh, we have serializer chips uh, that can sit uh, in the sensor side, so cameras, radars, lidars. Sure. Um, uh, our, our superset on the serializer set operates up to eight gigabits per second link speed. So there's a lot of bandwidth right out the gate there with that serializer. On the deserializer, we have a number of chips available depending upon the number of A5 ports, the number of CSI outputs in the direction uh, of the SOC. Uh, we have some pretty cool features, things like like a CSI input on the on the receive side on the deserializer sure. that actually allows us to cascade multiple deserializers if we need additional links, uh, and we can do all of the packet switching within the chip, so it's any input to any output. Um, so a lot of products coming out. We even, uh, and this is really I think very very unique. We even have shown that our technology can run up to four gigabits per second at at uh, 40 meters, four zero meters. So that's over 120 feet of cable length of coax cable, which is unprecedented 
implemented in the industry for, for an uncompressed surdy solution uh, that will address things like the trucking industry, buses, yeah, right. uh, heavy equipment, industrial sure. or uh, agricultural, all of those kind of things. So we have a whole bunch of silicon coming out. Um, and yeah, we're getting a lot, a lot of interest from, from major players in the industry looking to get their hands on those production ready chips. Of course. Uh, Daniel, let's say that I'm one of those industry players. I'm here at AutoSense or I'm watching this interview. Uh, tell me about what you're showing at your booth. Uh, what would you show a potential customer that, that, that would be here today? Okay, so we have a couple of really, really great demos on show. And, and the first one comes back to what I said about EMC robustness and the challenges that, that the industry are waking up to in terms of you know making sure that the system works, not just when the vehicle drives off of the lot, but over the entire lifetime, when things like cables begin to age and the effectiveness of shielding begins to degrade. So what we actually have is a shootout. We have a, a, a live shooter. We have an eight gigabits per second AFI link running next to a six gigabit per second proprietary, I will not name any proprietary FEC based solution, one of those legacy solutions I mentioned earlier, 8 gig A5, 6 gig legacy, so much higher bandwidth on the A5. We drive the data <clears throat> across the link up to the, the receivers for each of those technology and onto a display. And what we have is a noise injection coming from a signal generator equally injected directly into the cables. This is, this is not an EMC test that you need a chamber for because we're not going to come here with a big EMC chamber, but this is an injection or a, 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 a demonstration of the robot robustness of the receive circuits of AFI versus proprietary FEC based technologies uh, and we crank up the noise and we see at which point each of those technologies fail and you will not believe how quickly the legacy solution fails compared to the AFI technology, um, the, the VA7000 chipset. The, the, the AFI solution has something like 20 times more resilience to noise than the FEC based legacy solution and we display that live and there's no hidden strings or mirrors, this is real life Live, live demonstration um, and, and that really brings out the strength of a DSP a digital based technology uh, others some may say oh, you're injecting noise we have a sh we have a shield on the cable we work with shielded cables what we have shown is that shielding degrades over time the IEEE have reported that shielding degrades over time so technologies that base the robustness of their links on a shield as I say that may be good when the cable is new when the cable ages they're gonna start to run into EMC issues. I should mention, by the way, our chips know to run up to four gigabits per second, even on unshielded cabling. So we don't even need to worry about the shielding up to four gig. And if we do run shielding, we have those noise cancelling capabilities that if noise penetrates through the shield into the cable, we can cancel it. So that's the first demo. We showed that at CES. The positive response, people just couldn't believe what they were seeing. And as I say, I think the industry begins to wake up to the fact that EMC is going to be a major headache with them with legacy SERDI solution. That's one very, very important demo. Uh, another demo we have uh, is the, uh, shows the capabilities of our chipsets to provide a very advanced time-based services. The ability to send from the ECU side to the cameras or to the sensors, whatever they are, radars, lidars, we're agnostic. The ability to send very accurate clock and, and uh, sync pulses, frame sync pulses, in order to synchronize uh, the, different, uh, the different sensors. Uh, we do that with an extremely low accuracy, uh, very, very uh, high accuracy, extremely low jitter uh, of of just a few hundred picoseconds, it's, it's really amazingly accurate. Uh, and we're showcasing that in terms of, of, a, of a demo, which is, is a visual demo to showcase just how accurate we are and the things we can do with that. We've heard, by the way, from OEMs that that capability allows them to take an expensive programmable an element like an FPGA or a CPLD off of their board. So in other words, we bring added value and all of it built into the silicon. Yep. The data can come from the sensors to the ECU very closely aligned, needs less effort on the ECU side to do DSKU and things like like that. So those are just two of the many capabilities that the chipsets offer. Like I say, we think those are two key advantages, in particular, in particular the EMC robustness uh, that the people in the industry like to see. Well, and you mentioned, Daniel, you know, your innovations being well received or people being amazed that I can't believe you can do this. And I'm in that group of people. <laughs> Every time I talk to you, Daniel, I'm always amazed about uh, something new that you're doing with you. uh, Valens and, and how you're just pushing that need 
needle in technological innovation. So I am 100% certain the next time that we meet for an interview, I'll have, tell me more about MIPI A5, <laughs> you know, tell me more about your chipsets and, and everything. But I, I just, from all of us here at AutoVision News and Sense Media, I want to thank you for your time. My pleasure. For sharing your, your expertise. Have a great rest of the show. And then, of course, safe travels back home. Thank I've you. truly enjoyed this, Daniel. Likewise. Thank Always, Carl. Thank you. More to come from AutoSense and InCab in USA 2024 at the Huntington Place in downtown Detroit alongside Daniel Schwartzberg. I'm Carl Anthony, AutoVision News.